So welcome back guys to another video and it's crazy to think that 2019 is officially coming to a close and what an interesting year. I felt like it started out very slow but towards the end of the year we had so many great fantastic titles and I remember I had someone uh, say on social media that 2019 was a mediocre year in gaming which I really disagree. I felt like this year while wasn't as robust as maybe like 2017 or 18, I felt like it came out with titles for everyone. I feel like no matter what genre you're into, whether you were into kart racing or action adventure or JRPGs or fighting games, something came out that was a lot of fun. So today I want to talk about my top five favorite games of 2019. Now keep in mind this is going to be my top five and if there's some games I don't mention, uh, chances are I may have not played it. I mean there were so many games that came out I didn't get a chance to catch up with everything and uh, luckily I got a lot of my uh, backlog. Uh, for the holiday season. I got a lot of good games that came out this year for Christmas, so I'm going to be making some follow-up videos on that, so keep that in mind. Now let's get the negativity out of the way and talk about Biggest Letdown of 2019, and that game is going to be Metal Wolf Chaos XD. Now I did a whole review of this game. I was really looking forward to it because I knew about this game for a long time. It was on the original Xbox, only stayed in Japan, and it was from software, you were playing as the President of the United States in a giant mech trying to stop terrorism. I was like, oh my god. So when we got a physical release on the PlayStation 4, I went to GameStop and picked it up, played it, and I knew it was going to be dated. Okay, I knew the game was going to be dated, it was made a, a long time ago, but it was broken. The, the difficulty level, the checkpoints, everything about it was just kind of broken. It was a great concept of fantastic B-movie style story over the top. That's what I really loved about it, but the controls and everything else just really let me down and it's very, very unfortunate. Now you guys know I love my retro indie titles. Uh, I love playing indie titles and I love those retro style uh, games. So I decided to make that into a category and put best retro indie style. And that's gonna go to a game that I feel like slipped under the radar for a lot of folks. It's a game called Agalos. Now, Agalos was made by Storybird, and it's a love letter to Wonder Boy. There's definitely some Wonder Boy inspirations in this game, and I really enjoyed it. It felt like I was playing an enhanced Sega Master System game. It's got the puzzle elements, it's got the hack and slash and action RPG, and unfortunately, it's one of those games I feel like a lot of folks are just going to kind of pass on and, and just, you know, years later become a hidden gem and that's very unfortunate because I, I feel like if you're a big Wonder Boy fan, if you enjoyed Monster Boy that came out in 2018 like I did, it was my top game in 2018, definitely check out Agalos, you will not be disappointed. Now we've had a lot of collections and compilations this year and I really do enjoy those because of the convenience of just, you know, having all the games on a card or a disc and playing. I've been a big fan since I got my Sega Genesis. Uh, back a long time ago and it came with the Genesis 6 pack which is pretty ironic because I decided to make a best compilations of 2019 and that goes to the Sega Genesis Classics. Now I played it on the Nintendo Switch and I absolutely loved having the Sega Genesis library on the go and this is a pretty good collection because it has you know your platformers like Sonic the Hedgehog and you know Kid Chameleon and Decap Attack and uh, you know Gunstar Heroes. It's also got some beat em ups like Streets of Rage and Golden Axe and some RPGs like the Fancy Star series and Shining Force. And one of the best purchases I had of 2019 was the 8 bit Doe M30 controller. I synced this up to my Switch and just instant nostalgia. I was sitting there just playing all these Sega Genesis games on this Sega style controller. I wouldn't say this is a Genesis style controller because it has the top buttons. I would say this is more like Saturn. But you guys get it. You guys look at this and you think of Sega. And, you know, playing the Switch and being able to play Super Nintendo games, NES, Genesis, on the go, downtime at work, man, what a great, what a great time to be alive, really. And my most anticipated title of 2019 is going to go to Bloodstain Ritual of the Night. Now you guys know I'm a huge Castlevania fan and I've had this game under my radar since 2015 and it's a fantastic title. It's a love letter to fans of the Igarashi era Castlevania. I mean, if you enjoyed Symphony in the Night and all the Castlevanias on handhelds like the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS, you're definitely gonna be in for a treat. And what I loved about this is it has its own identity, but at the same time, 
it's got the tribute to the Castlevania series. I, I, I was playing this and I was just like, man, this is this is Castlevania. This is like if you know Konami got off their ass and put out a new Castlevania game with Igarashi, this would be it. It was great. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And I, I will say, I even played the Nintendo Switch port and I was still really enjoying it. Untitled Goose is probably one of my biggest surprises of 2019 just because of how weird this game is. I honestly thought this was going to be one of those novel indie titles like I Am Bread or Goat Simulator where you played a little bit of it, got your fix, and went on to the next title. But I'll be honest, this game has some really interesting puzzles. I mean, you're playing as a goose, which is one of the most evil creatures ever to grace this earth and you're causing some mischief you're causing these uh, missions that you have to do to have these cause and effects with humans to just kind of make their day terrible and that's what i really love about it i mean it kind of made me think of the old pc games like point and click games kind of like maniac mansion even though it's not a point and click but like those games in order to do certain puzzles you have to have certain elements collide with other events that you're doing and i really like that it makes it feel more organic in a world and i really love the graphic style the subtle piano mr rogers kind of soundtrack is a nice little touch i got this game on sale i'm so glad i played it i am even more ecstatic that it's on ps4 so sony players can enjoy this game just like i did on the nintendo switch now before I get into the game of the year, here are some honorable mentions of games I really enjoyed but did not make the countdown. And my game of the year should not come to a surprise to many folks if you've been following me on social media, if you've been watching games I've been playing, and that is going to be Super Mario Maker 2. This is my most played game on the Switch. I've had my Switch since 2017, and I've put over 100 hours plus into Super Mario Maker 2. I'm a huge classic Mario fan. It's my comfort food when it comes to gaming, and I, I just cannot get enough of it. Me and my girlfriend, we love this title so much. We, that's how we spent our July 4th and you know if, if, you, if you're on the fence about it about making levels you don't have to make levels. That's what I like about it. You're not just making levels. You're playing other folks levels and the community makes some of the most polished Mario titles I've played in quite some time and the story mode has some of the best Mario levels from Nintendo. I cannot get enough of it. So much so that I was so excited when they had the update with the 8-bit link. It opens up a whole new doorway to Mario levels with Zelda-like dungeons in the Mario universe. It, it's a lot of fun. I feel like if you have an Nintendo Switch, if you love Mario Brothers, this game is a hot app that you have to own. So anyway guys, those are my top five games of 2019. I'm eagerly waiting for 2020, but I'm also waiting to hear your top five. So leave a comment below, tell me some of your top five games of 2019. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, but also hit the bell for notifications so you're notified whenever there's future videos coming out on this channel. I got a lot of games I've been playing episodes coming up because I've been playing a lot of titles over Christmas break and it's been such a blast. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, happy gaming.